Okay, go everyone. All right, this is uh, just a quick follow-up video to my other view. I didn't actually get a take a video of all the guards and panels painted up, and uh, yeah, that's right. Don't know, just forgot. Got around, didn't get around to it. Anyway, we've just had this out the out the bush for the weekend uh, we actually cleared a track so that we've got two exits from our camping area and uh, it also gives us another place to ride where there's no other traffic ride and drive my son took his his bike out there as well and uh, yeah um, the guards work really well you know, we didn't get any dirt, mud, sticks, anything hit us at all. It, yeah, worked perfect. Um, but we did have another few issues. Uh, you notice the roll cage isn't on there at the moment. It's because we've had it inside my trailer and it doesn't actually fit under there with the roll cage, so you have to take it off. It, yeah, it's, it's six bolts. It comes off pretty easy, so yeah, no real drama there. Um, yeah, the now I, I drove this buggy, yeah, a lot harder than what my son's ever driven it, and uh, sort of he put it through its paces, so to speak. And uh, yeah, I've got a few other issues now that I want to correct. Um, one is the turn lock. The turn circle is ridiculous. It's yeah, we we found ourselves a few times having to do three point turns on tracks that it should have got around easily. You know? And uh, yeah, so I'm going to. This is part of why I haven't bothered to put the cage back on and why it's back in the shed. Yeah, this. Frames, just yes, yeah, just another thing that wasn't designed that very well. And uh, it doesn't come in enough. Yeah, to, to allow you to get a good steering lock. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, I mean it would have come in before, a little bit before with the other ridiculous guards on it that you know, which was I just here yeah, didn't do jack, but it still would not. Yeah, you know, even with the wheels hitting the hitting the frame, it's still not a lot of steering lock. See, yeah, I'm only taken away from it probably an inch. So yeah, it's it's got to be better than that. There's a few things got. Got bent and just noticed me light bracket. Got a little bit bent. That's because we had his bike leaning up against it. Yeah. Yeah, I moved them from down the front. He smashed the original headlights, or one of them anyway. And that's another stupidly ridiculous idea putting the lights sticking out in front of everything, in front of the buggy. You know, you, you, you're always going to smash them when they're down there. So, yeah, that's why I made new brackets. We. I have another set of lights that I bought cheaply for a different purpose and didn't actually end up using them. So here yeah, we're mounting them up here out of the way. So they won't get broken. So, but yeah, so when you sit in it, because I'm on the wrong side, I'm not on the driver's side, but your leg is sort of against the bar here. So I'll be you know, turning it in just past where your leg so probably what I'll do um, just to make it smooth actually I think I'll cut those two pieces right off and then turn them so that I've got the smooth bend coming in but yeah I'm going to bring it in oh, yeah. good two inches at least bring this in and back out again so and 
yeah, it would have been nice if I'd have thought of that before I put all that plates in, but yeah, because I'm going to have to disturb them now, but anyway, you get that. And uh, yeah, because this is electronic ignition, before I go welding anything on the frame, I'll be disconnecting the uh, electronic box, removing it from the frame altogether. Don't take any risk on that. Okay, um, the other issue we had getting in the trailer, and we put it in the trailer backwards, and this is when it wouldn't fit right in, and because uh, we left the the front wheels hanging out the back of the door this is before I modified the trailer, and uh, there's a video on that as well if you're interested. But yeah, it fitted in under here, no problem, and uh, yeah, this time I just drove it up the ramps into the trailer and the, the radiator didn't fit under it and I uh, busted the top of it and fortunately I actually noticed you know before we left and I took some uh, yeah, epoxy ribbon yeah, what you call knead it and I stuck that back on it didn't actually break the thing it just um, separated where it was soldered so, but no, yeah, that's probably all that'll ever get. Spray a bit of paint over that so you can't see it. But I got some of that on the car. On a, a, um, uh, there's a pipe that goes onto the side of the radiator, and I'll put some of that on there temporarily oh, four years ago. Still there, hasn't leaked, cracked, broken, nothing. So, yeah. It's good stuff, this epoxy ribbon works really well. But anyway, yeah, rather than having that issue again, so this time when we put it back in, we unbolted it, dropped it down out of the way. It's only going to come down an inch to fit in the trailer, but rather than having that issue every time, yeah. Uh, so it just bolts straight into the frame itself, and uh, yeah, that way. You, the more times you undo them, the more you risk chewing the threads up and you know, having it not work. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, chop as much out of this as I can an inch or more and bring this bend down to about here somewhere. Just lower it down. There's plenty of room. I mean, this is another one of the silly things that are on this, this buggy in the frame department, you know. There is no need for it to be that high, you know. It doesn't need to stick up that much. Uh, why you put it there and have excess metal, I, I don't know. I just must have a surplus of pipe or something. I just like wasting it. Uh, yeah. As I explained before and all this, this whole frame design on the back is, is ridiculous. It's just so heavy and... Yeah. Not that necessary. There's, there's a little bit of a shock relay thing in it, but I don't really think it'd make any difference, to be honest. And uh, yeah, credit where credit due is due, though. Uh, as far as reliability goes, this engine's done really well. We've had no issues whatsoever with this engine. Uh, it's never required a tune up. Um, yeah, it's never had the carby off it. Uh, yeah, doesn't blow smoke, leak, use oil in any way. Uh, and didn't even blow a head gasket when like this, because this is the radiator. We got the radiator rebuilt, it fell to pieces. And it overheated several times. And yes, when my son was driving around the yard, and because he didn't bother to say anything, and he drove it around several times with basically no cooling in it, you know, or very low anyway, and uh, yeah, I said, motor survived it, didn't blow a head gasket or have any issues, so yeah, credit where it's had to the, the motor's pretty decent, but yeah, this clutch, which is brand new, this is another Chinese made thing, it just slips, we you know, I, I try, 
but just driving it up the ramps into the trailer, it, it smoked the clutch up. You know, we got into another spot where we were on a bit of a, a steep rise and we tried to take off the bottom and it wouldn't do it. We just sat there burning the clutch, so yeah, we, had, we had to reverse back and then take a run at it to get up there. And, yeah, that's just ridiculous, you know. Like I said, it's a brand new clutch and just, just not good enough. So, yeah, we might be looking for a different type of clutch sometime in the future, but yeah, we'll probably wait till it burns out altogether, I suppose. But, although then we might get stuck somewhere and have to be trying to retrieve it out of the bush. But yeah, but, yeah as I said before, if it was me, I'd, yeah, I'd be taking it, the whole engine, gearbox, everything out of it anyway. You know, I'd put a yeah, four-cylinder motorbike engine, yeah, a 500 or 750 motorbike engine in it with a clutch and five gears. But, uh, yeah. I know my son had never used that sort of power anyway. It'd just be, and the clutch would just be a nuisance for him. So, I don't know. But that's what I'd really like to do to it. Um, yeah, the other issue for anybody that's got one, these coolant bottles leak. That's not original. That came off my motorbike. And it came off my motorbike because I modified the motorbike and I know I've got fits where it's supposed to go anyway, so I've got to find one that's a different shape. So, yeah, I'll put it on here. But, yeah, if you got one of these buggies and you have this issue of it continuously leaking out of the lid, and, you know, from what I can gather from forums and other people that have these, all of them leak. So your best option is to throw it away, go to the motorbike wreckers and buy yeah, one off a Japanese motorbike. So, as I said, we've put this in, we haven't had any issues with it. So, you know, so... Yeah, now if there's anything else more worth mentioning, but... Uh, yeah. Other than that, yeah, we that did pretty well. We made up a cushion to go on the seat. We got a like a single cushion that goes across, which is a yeah, three inch seat foam. That makes a big difference. Saves your back a bit when you're going over rough ground. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll leave it at that and. Uh, I'll do another short video when I finish this after I uh, modify the frame and uh, yeah give it some more turn circle oh yeah one thing I almost forgot this is another issue we had this uh, gearbox to reverse forward and reverse gear um, it doesn't same damn one and engage forward very well. Engage is reverse, no problem. And of course reverse like well, that's in forward gear now. Reverse the cable pulls it and holds it. But forward is only regulated by the by the spring. It's the scissor spring on that arm. That's the only thing that holds it in forward gear. And you know, it's probably um lost its tension over the years and uh yeah i'm going to i'll check the adjustment first although yeah it doesn't feel like there's any strain feels like it's going all the way in but yeah i'll check that first i'll back the adjustment off and make sure it's actually going over fully but yeah i'm gonna put a secondary spring on there i'll put a Oh. something that yeah just hook it over here from there to there probably put a bed spring on it or something although that might be too hard to, I'll see I said I'll put the hardest spring I can find on it and then I'll check it and make sure it's not too hard to pull the lever but, uh, but yeah as I said it, 
takes quite a while, sits there going bang, 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 and then finally it'll engage. And uh, we even had a couple of times where it jumped out the forward gear. So, yeah, that's another vital thing that I need to do. <laughs> so, and possibly it's it's a little bit worn inside it. I didn't sort of look at it too much. It was like an oil, so I pulled it apart and put a new oil seal in it, refill it with the oil, gearbox oil. And uh, I didn't do a whole lot of inspection or anything, but it's just got uh, it's got a gear with uh, I think four slots in it and another gear with four pins, and it just drops into those slots. And probably the edges of them are a little bit worn. And that's, yeah, what's causing the issue. But, yeah, I think we can get around it just by making it pull in a bit tighter. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, hit a like, please. Okay, bye.